Federer in three tough sets at Monte Carlo. And another young player coming up with a one-handed backhand, which again, I, I, I find a very encouraging sign. Orna a couple of points away from a second set tiebreak. Boy, the, the, the tactics, the strategy of this match are so well laid out now. And Horner playing mostly from the baseline, trying to aim into the Henman backhand. Henman trying to chip and charge off that side and get himself to the net. This is going to come down to execution. Another word that's been going that will go well with our impaling guillotine theme here today. Execution is good. <laughs> Point down from the second set tie break for Horna. I'm almost wondering if Henman might want to move around, especially on that ad side. Move his positioning so Gasquet can't keep finding his backhand. Give Gasquet something else to look at. Horna, I should say. to the tie break. Critical now for him to try to score the match. He had a chance, a set point, serving at 5-3. That was broken by Horna. And uh, Henman led early in the match. The opening set broke Horna in his first game for a three-love lead, only to find Horna rallying and taking the opening set 7-5. And Rick Molina asks the youngsters for some silence. Well, you heard all the applause for Richard Gasquet when he was introduced at Chatrier. Those seats are packed. And so the Henman fans stay here and they're letting their British player know they're in support. There's an early mini break for Henman. First serve for Henman, 3-1. And another outstanding first serve. Four in this second set tie break. Tim Henman in the lead. Just did get there in time to pancake the winner. How about that for Henman? <laughs> Sliding and slicing that most difficult attempt into his opponent's court. Wasn't a bad little drop shot either from Horna. He held it. He made a nice placement, and Henman again. He, uh, Henman's looking to come in anyway. 
We're at court one. Used to be the second show court before Susan Longland was constructed a few years ago. Luis Horna, number 59 in the world, and number seven seed Tim Henman. And a delicious battle. Horna won the opening set 7-5, rallying from a break game down, and now they're dueling in a second set tie break and Henman coming up with his best stuff has a five points to one lead. Thank you. Henman. And now Tim Henman uh, with his two serves a chance to secure the set. See the pretty hash marks the long stretch marks along the court left by both these players. Henman knows how to move on the clay. He knows how to slide into a shot. He knows how to slide out of a shot and recover. See there off to the left of the horn of the returner. The big skid marks. And with that, Henman has a handful of set points, 6-2. Had a set point serving at 5-3, but denied by the 24-year-old opponent from Lima, Peru. They'll play best two of three for the third round. Seven five to Horna, seven six for Henman. Chris Fowler will be chatting with Venus Williams. The American is through to the third round. Back to this match shortly, but let's go to Dick and Marion Court One. All right, Cliff. Here after Henman served so well in that tie break to win the breaker seven points to two. He struggled with his serve and won only two points the first three games of this third set as Luis Horna has a 4-1 lead. Henman showed his temper too a couple of changeovers ago aggravated for dropping serve. It's a very noisy court as we said cozy confines very noisy kids. And it seems as though Tim was bothered by some photographers who were moving around as well. Now, just a couple of weeks, and this is a guy who's known as Gentleman Tim, but a couple of weeks ago in Hamburg, he disputed a call. He was up a set and a break against Juan Ignacio Chela. He ended up losing the match, and in large part, he thought that at four all, in the second set, he got a terrible call. Played the next two points badly, and dropped his serve. After the match was over, he declined to shake hands with the guy in the chair, kicked the ball boy's mat, and spat our Tim. I know. He's, in, he's a little touchy out there right now, as you can imagine, down 4-1. Under uh, unsettling conditions. Horner's getting a nice piece of his serves now. That first serve success is so criti critical to Henman's game, and he really staggered with it early in this set. 57% for the set, and he's raised it to 62% for the match, most of that coming late in that second set. Horn is serving at almost 70%, taking good care of his service games. And he slices his ninth ace. And a game point for 2 4 in the third. I think that's a nice play from Henman. As you can see, he's getting hammered on that second serve, so now he's just placing first serves better. You can think out there. And when he takes a little bit of pace off of that first serve, it becomes sort of an Edberg move. Paul Anakin wants him up at the net, and if he can take something off of his serve and place it well, he'll get that much tighter to the net for his first falling. Henman, like Edberg, he's a one-volley guy. He doesn't want to. He can play. He can defend at the net if he, if he has to. But he's a precise volleyer. It usually just takes one from him.
delicate touch from Horna as he slides into that drop shot. That's that's why his socks are pink. <laughs> Beautiful. And he's just such a low rider, isn't he? Well, he's, he has his, the, the, if you're going to measure distance on slide, Horna is in first place so far in the championship. <laughs> and there's, there's plenty of fellows who can do that. That's why this is such a tough one. Composite clay in the States just doesn't behave the same way. Much finer powder over here. And Horna on cue powders that forehand and with it a break point. Chance for a 5-1 lead for the Peruvian. I just love how he coils up Horna and unloads. Explodes into that shot. He uses every bit of his body on his shots. Those are 165 pound shots. That's right. Plus spin, plus all the work he puts on the ball. It's even heavier than that. That misses. Nine o'clock in the east of the U.S. and six in the morning out on the west coast. We're at three in the afternoon in beautiful Paris, the 2005 French Open Championship, second notch, the Grand Slam. Murat Sapin won in Australia. And this one's a total mystery. So many could walk off with the trophy a weekend from now. Second round action, Tim Henman and Luis Horna. Horna. 59th ranked in the world against the seventh seed Henman. They have split sets, but Horn in the lead here in the third. Henman's trying to hold it together a little bit. The ball kid's a bit confused there, and uh, you can tell this is <laughs> this is not an easy match for Tim. Not only because of Horn, because of the conditions that the kid's so close to this court. Here they are. It's <laughs> <laughs> their big day, the first Wednesday of the French Open. Thousands of kids here enjoying the action. Back to Deuce. And then again talking to the chair. To Enrique Molina of Spain. <laughs> I am like, not the babysitter. It's, like, it's really, it's, it's like trying to play in the, a match in the middle of a kindergarten classroom. Oh, sure, they're quiet now. <laughs> <laughs> but at close proximity, as you oh, can see. It's just great. <laughs> After the corner shot hit the net court, it took a terrible bounce for Henman and another break point. And see, for these, these kids, they, they, by getting tickets so close to these guys, they get to see. They get to see the speed of shot, the, the weight, the, the sliding, the power, the emotion. In so many of these tournaments, you can't afford anything but cheap seats. What a thrill for them. Nice. That's a lot of work. And again, there's some movement ab about this court that Henneman's not happy about. Horner making a fine defensive play to force Henneman to win it with the overhead. And deny Horner his second break point in this game. It's 
third chance for Horna to jump out 5-1 and serve for the two set to one lead. Plenty of noise here at the bull ring, court one, and you know it's going to be amped up over at Philippe Chatrier as they cheer for their own Richard Gasquet. Only a few years older than some of these kids at 18. We'll get back to that action. Plenty to appreciate all live here on this Wednesday from Roland Garros. Handman going wide again, and that's been a successful play for him. At Deuce Court. <laughs> oh, now we've got a whistle. <laughs> Racket speed from Horna that generates spin. The Hemmings shot is a lot flatter. And, and, but it, all this top spin jumps through the court. Hemmings hard flat shots tend to lose pace against the clay. Horna's just get magnified. This game a struggle. Sixth deuce, longest of the match. Hedman trying to hold on. He's already down a break in this third set. <laughs> 